Okay, I'm gonna cover the uh, filter changes for the oil, the fuel, and the air filter on a Bobcat B100. This is a uh, backhoe rotor that was built um, in the early 2000s. And the way these are set up is they are, um, I would categorize this machine as a construction grade uh, machine. It's definitely construction grade, meaning it's, um, it's heavy duty, right? There's, there's a lot heavier uh, bushings, pins, and the hydraulics, the rods, they're all sized a lot larger than what you would need in a machine like this. But um, the bottom line is that these machines are real easy to work on. Um, they have uh, Kubota diesels in them, which is a really nice motor. It's a 25 horsepower Kubota diesel motor, three cylinder, and it runs really smooth and it has um, a digging depth of about nine to 10 feet. And it's, it's set up really, really heavy duty. Even the buckets on these are the style bucket that you would see on a much larger construction grade machine. It's got the quick attach buckets in the back. Uh, in the front, it's also got quick attach. It's got um, hydraulics in the back and hydraulics in the front. So these machines, you can run a lot of different things and you can you can do a lot with them and having all the extra hydraulic ports means that you can run a backhoe thumb in the back or an attachment in the back it's all quick attach buckets where they attach on these and also in the front you can run grapples you can run um, just about anything you want in the front of these so uh, super useful machine extremely heavy duty and also um, powered by a Kubota diesel, which is which is really good. So, but, but today I'm going to go through just the filter changes on these oil, uh, air filter, and the fuel filter. I want to point out the way I have this loader up in the air like this. Um, I don't typically do this, and, and honestly, you don't want to do this unless you have the right protection on this from the factory. So this is the factory bar that usually sits right here on the side when you're not working on it. And this bar goes in over the rod on the cylinder and is actually locked into place the way you see it's wedged in and it's wedged in. The only time you ever wanna do this is when you have that factory bar or that, that protection in there. Never ever do this um, if you don't have that. Uh, a lot of people, did this over the years and when that when that loader comes if that loader were to come down and you were underneath that it would it would be bad obviously so you don't want to do that so rule of thumb if you're not comfortable with machines and you haven't been around a lot and you don't have the factory uh, safety bar never ever do this always do this with the loader down and the only difference is, is you'll have to work around it when you try to do the filters. Not a big deal. It's not that much harder to do it. But um, again, you know, don't do this unless uh, you've got that, that protection in place. Okay. Um, got all the filters changed. Uh, the way this works is the side panels come off on these. There's about five volts on either side. Uh, you're going to take all those off. And then you can easily get to uh, both sides of the engine. The oil filter, it's basically just spin it off, spin it on, you know, drain the oil. And then I always like to put the hours on there that I changed it. That's the oil filter. And the fuel filter is a spin on fuel filter as well. It's in there with the hours written on it. That's easily, um, you know, you spin it off, you spin it on. And then the air filter is going to be, you know, in here. You take this, um, <clears throat> this wing nut off and the air filter comes right out. That's pretty much it. There's also an inline uh, fuel filter underneath the machine and you simply undo the hoses on either side and you put the new fuel filter in line uh, either side of the hoses. That's pretty much it. That's like a general maintenance. It takes about um, four and a half, five quarts of oil. And I used, um, always used the Rotella uh, 1540 diesel oil. That's my favorite one to use because it's probably the best one you can get. And it's not that expensive to use it, so it's the Rotella uh, 1540 diesel. Um, the other thing to kind of note with this is basically um, when it comes to filters, I say this a lot on my channel, try to use the, the factory OEM filters. You can also get aftermarket OEM. That's what I used here, and it's only because 
the aftermarket OEM filters were um, available in stock and the factory ones uh, would take a while to get. So with Bobcat, all the parts are readily available, but sometimes you have to wait. So I'd rather not wait too long. I got a high end or a good quality aftermarket filter. I think Baldwin is the name of the filter maker and they make a lot of premium fil aftermarket filters. So I got that as a kit and I got the kit online and it came to me, you know, within a day or two, it was at my, at my front door. That's what I would recommend you do. Um, however, if you want to use the Bobcat filters, uh, you can get them. It just takes a little bit longer. That's pretty much it for the basic maintenance on these. That covers engine oil and filter, um, fuel filters and the air filter. One last thing I wanted to mention, when you do the fuel filter on these, it's a vertical filter. So when you, before you spin the new filter on, you want to fill that with diesel fuel right to the top. If you don't do that, you won't start the machine. It'll be very, you know, very hard to start and you may not be able to start it because there's so much air in that filter. So again, you know, take the new filter, fill it with diesel fuel like I did. I have a can here, just, you know, poured it in. And then when you put the filter on, it's full of fuel and it's much easier to start.